Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. God be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us your servant's grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of your divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith and worship and bring us at last to see you in your one and eternal glory, O Father, who with the Son and the Holy Spirit live and reign one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in, in attendance above him. Each had six wings, with two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook the, as the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who, who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Let us pray Psalm 29 together. Ascribe, Ascribe to God, God you heavenly beings. Ascribe to God glory and strength. Ascribe due honor to God's holy name. Worship the most high in beauty of holiness. The voice of God is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. God is upon mighty waters. The voice of God is a powerful voice. The voice of God is a voice of splendor. The voice of God breaks the cedar trees. God breaks the cedars of Lebanon. God makes Lebanon sick like a calf and Mount Hermon like a young and wild ox. The voice of God splits the flames of the fire. The voice of God shakes the wilderness. God shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of God makes the old trees writhe and strips the forest bare. And in the temple of the Holy One, all are crying glory. God sits enthroned above the flood and throne forevermore. God shall give strength to the people. God shall give the people the blessing of peace. A reading from Romans. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. 
and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If, in fact, we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God.
the Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. There was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen. Yet, you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I've been thinking a lot about dancing lately. We've been ending our services with this blessing. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. So new life and hope and dancing. The blessing seems to connect them all. But how, what are the connections? When we dance, are we physically moving into a new part of our life? Are we not only moving our bodies into a new space, but also moving through our very lives, connecting movement and physicality and grace and love and beauty? Are we looking up from our morning and finding hope on the horizon dancing toward us? as we dance across the meadows? Are we converting our mourning? Are we converting our deep sadnesses into all of this? All of this beauty? Of course, I hope so. 
Because if we aren't doing that, dancing, it seems to me, is a useless waste of energy. I might, might already have confessed to you that I watch way too much TikTok. While dog videos are my favorite, I also enjoy watching people dance. Just making up dances for the camera, dances that serve no purpose other than to delight. Dance, uh, dances that move us into a space called joy, maybe in, even into a space called beauty. Dancing is, of course, a part of being human. Dancing is aimless and wildly creative. It's about the truth of our lives danced into ritual beauty about the dignity of the human body, about, about the essence of the human spirit. And as far as I'm concerned, it's also a mystery. Theologian Phyllis Tickle, who died in 2015, said that the church is dancing in the middle of the great emergence. The church re-emerges, she says, every 500 years, and that time is now. Remember the, the Reformation of 500 years ago? There was Cranmer and Luther and Zwingli and Calvin and on and on. Well, Dr. Tickle says it's our turn. Right here in the Episcopal Church in Minnesota, we're dancing towards new hope and joy, even delight, as we innovate and fail and innovate and succeed and innovate and become energized by the creativity that we are given in the power of the Holy Spirit who leads us, who leads us, whispering a deeply enticing, even seductive dance beat into our souls. If you saw the long report on the state of the church in the United States, in the Star Tribune last Sunday, you might be less than dancing for joy about how church is going. But Phyllis Tickle is reminding us that we live in the throes of vast arcs of time. 500 years since the Reformation, one year since George Floyd. And in between, in between and beyond those events, vast changes, and movements that we are constantly challenged to live into. When I visited George Floyd Square in early March, I saw that people moved through that space in their own sorts of dances, stopping, looking, meditating, turning, weeping, hugging, and looking to the promise, looking to the hope that is implied by that place. Yes, it's a memorial to one who was brutally and senselessly murdered, but it's also a sign pointing us to a better future, one into which we are called to dance together with fervor. Today is the Feast of the Holy Trinity. This feast day reminds us that we're not alone in the dance. God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the persons of God, dance together, creating, redeeming, and making us holy. God lives in a sacred relationship with God's self. There's nothing quiet or stagnant about the way God fills the earth with life. And where is God leading us in all of this? We don't know. We never know. The exigencies of life are exciting and merciless. The changes and chances of life fill us with energy and often give us a big dose of fear. And we ask questions. How can any of this be believed? How can I believe that there is a God, let alone one God, in three persons? The answer, beauty.
Phyllis Tickle told the story of having given a lecture to a packed cathedral art audience somewhere down south. It was followed by the inevitable question and answer period. That's when someone got up, challenged her on the truth of the virgin birth. Was Mary really a virgin when Jesus was born? And of course, the discussion became, is the virgin birth scientific and historical fact? Tickle saw a young man way, way in the back, paying rapt attention to everything that was going on. So after people removed their claws from her, after the session broke up, the teenager came to her and said, ma'am, there's something I don't understand. What's that? I don't understand why everyone is so upset about this. I believe in the virgin birth. It's so beautiful that it has just got to be true, whether it happened or not. And Phyllis Tickle's universe suddenly shifted. She said about that moment, it is a whole new world. He had moved beyond mere facts to understanding based on apprehending beauty. I felt like I was standing on holy ground. Holy ground is where you are standing when you're dazzled by the beauty of mystery. Holy ground is where you are standing when you suddenly sense something new about God. Holy ground is where you are standing when darkness becomes light and truth and all is well. Holy ground is where you dance. Now that's a story, of course, about the virgin birth, but it could, it could just as well have been about the mystery of the Holy Trinity. Three persons, one God. They can't be divided, yet they exist separately. If we insist on understanding, on parsing the Holy Trinity, we're going to totally miss the beauty that is God. It's easy to do. Easy to do, especially as weary adults, world-weary people, COVID-weary people, racism-weary people, divisive politics-weary people. And the only way out of our spiritual exhaustion, the only way, is to dance out on the dance floor or in our imaginations we need to dance my friend Gertrude Mueller Nelson begins her book to dance with God with a beautiful story about her then three-year-old daughter Gertrude was occupied with sewing so Annika who is now in her 50s, I believe, took some long, brightly colored strips of cloth and disappeared. Gertrude found her later, sitting in the grass in the garden. She had fastened those strips of brightly colored cloth to the top of a stick with sticky wads of tape and said to her mother, I'm making a banner for a procession. I need a procession so that God will come down and dance with us. Then she solemnly lifted her banner into the wind where it began to flutter, a holy, sticky flutter. And slowly, very slowly, she danced. Today, every day. Hold up the bright bits of your life, the stained bits of your life, the torn bits of your life, the sticky bits, the scraps, 
whatever you have, hold them up and invite God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit to dance with you as you lead in the dance of beauty. Dance your dance of beauty to the tune of mystery. Dance your dance as God frees us from bondage to history and science. Dance with God as we are given glimpses of the beauty of truth and the truth of beauty. God comes to you. Dance. Amen. In the words Christ has taught us, we now pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial. 
and deliver us from evil. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Gathered as Christ's beloved in this place, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all creation. Life-giving God, we praise you for empowering us to be your hands and feet, your heart and voice in the world. Through your life in us and our life in you, may we grow in the way of love, treat our neighbors as ourselves, and walk in beauty with your creation. Hear our prayer, Holy One. Justice, loving God, inspire the leaders of the nations that they hear the cries of your people for equity, safety, and hope. May those who control vast resources be led to use them to relieve suffering and build a more just society. We pray especially for the countries who are suffering from the ravages of the pandemic and the horrors of war. Hear our prayer, Holy One. Innovating God, with joy we affirm your gracious presence in the new things you are raising up through the Holy Spirit at work in communities of faith. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, Craig, our bishop, and the clergy, staff, and lay people of Saints Luke and James. Help us to be of one accord in heart and mind as we discern where the spirit is leading. Like a choral symphony, may we sing the spirit's song. Hear our prayer. Holy One. Networking God, our lives depend on the hard work, integrity, and skill of people we will never know, and they depend on us. We thank you for blessing our relationships and work. We thank you for the invention of effective vaccines and the progress of vaccination. May the web of human relationships glow with the energy of love. Hear our prayer, Holy One. Restoring God, the creatures of earth, water, wind, and fire speak to each other in languages we have failed to comprehend. We, li we lament the ignorance that has harmed us all. Thank you for inspiring the work of organizations and individuals who care for creation in ways that restore harmony in your earthly realm. Hear our prayer, Holy One. Compassionate God, may our prayers magnify the flow of your abundant love and mercy to bring healing and hope to Adrian, Alejandro, Barb and Jim, Betty, Candy, Charlie, Colleen, David S., Doug and Yvonne, Doug T., Gail, Ginny, Jack H., Jane, Jerry, Kathy B., Lois, Marlis, Marnie, Martha, Matt and Rachel, Maxine, Melanie, Mike, Minty, Neil, Nell, Renee, Rich and Ann, Ron, Sarah S., Susan C., Sylvia, Ted, Theo, Vicki, Wade, and William. Are there others? Hear our prayer, Holy One. 
timeless one, we thank you for the lives of those who have gone before us into your eternal kingdom, especially Max Passforth and Faith Joyce. Are there others? We pray for them and are grateful for their prayers for us. Hear our prayer, Holy One. Steadfast, loving God, amidst the challenges of a year of disruption, fear, sickness, and death, cruelty, and hate, we are grateful beyond words that you walk with us through the valley of shadow. We are blessed by the generosity, inspiration, endurance, hope, goodness, faithfulness, and trust you express in us and by your love in which we live and move and have our being. Glory to God whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God in the church and in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. And may God Almighty Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen.
Thanks for joining us today on Trinity Sunday. We invite you to come back and join us every Sunday morning where we gather on Zoom at 930. Then stay with us for our pre-recorded worship service on YouTube that starts at 10 a.m. After the service, usually around 1045, we invite you to return to our Zoom link to hear announcements, share in a little fellowship, and to participate in what we call our virtual coffee hour. And maybe someday soon the day is coming when those coffee hours won't be virtual anymore. On many Sundays when scheduled, we invite you to stick around after the coffee hour for our adult education forum, an opportunity for learning, listening, group discussion on topics of insight and inspiration relevant to the day. I hope all of you who are listening or watching had an opportunity to participate in the commemorative events for our dear brother, George Floyd. And we hope that God is smiling and having mercy upon all of those who feel and are in tune with the kinds of repression that led to his unfortunate demise. Thank you for being with us. We hope you have a opportunity to come and visit us again. And we look forward to seeing you at that time. Let us go forth into the world, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.